hate nations getting their money's worth if you are in this arena. That's for dang sure. I, I know that there are team goals, and that's what ultimately matters, but Bam has made no secret that he would like to be in Utah in a couple weeks. And how much are you clamoring for it? How much does a night like this help that? How much are you rooting for it? Are, are you campaigning? What, where's, where's, yeah, I mean, where's it on your wish list? Certainly I'm, I'm rooting for it. I thought he should have been uh, an all-star last year. Uh, there, there's really no reason he shouldn't have been an all-star last year. He missed five weeks. So what? <laughs> He was playing at an all-star level. Um, you know, there's been other guys that have missed a, a month or five weeks and still got uh, in. Uh, it's deserving, um, you know, and uh, that's not really my nature, you know, to go out and campaign. I just think he's uh, he's an all-star, and, uh, you know, he showed it tonight, and, you know, thankfully it was a big win. It was on TV. I hope, you know, uh, people uh, notice. Um but he he really impacted the win, you know, particularly uh, going down the stretch. And it wasn't just, you know, the scoring. I, I love the two-man collaboration that he and Tyler were, were going to. Uh, I wanted them to get to more of that uh, in the first half. Um, but they really settled in uh, down the stretch. And uh, it was just really good, coherent uh, actions uh, for us. But uh, Bam was, was terrific as well on the backside of our zone. Probably a lot of that stuff... It doesn't really show up, um, but his communication, um, getting guys to the right spots uh, because they they were doing some unique things against our zone, uh, and then protecting the rim, you know, where they usually had a, a, a guy uh, on the baseline. He was able to kind of be in two places at once, doing the matrix thing, uh, which you have to do uh, against the zone, but you have to be you have to have um, you know a great feel. It's it's highly nuanced. Um, and, and again, he, he's just proven that he can he can defend in any coverage uh, that we do, and he can do it as well as anybody in this league. So it was a rough shooting night for Tyler, but what does it say about in that game-winning shot? He got blitzed, and yeah, like this right. is uh, um, this is what we've been emphasizing with our team. You know, right now we can win basketball games whether we feel like we're in rhythm, whether we feel like. Uh, the offense is uh, flowing, uh, whether we have confidence or not, it doesn't matter. Like It's about impacting the game and impacting the win, ultimately. Uh, and Tyler made some big plays uh, down the stretch. Uh, you know, the spray, you know, for the three. Uh, probably more than anything was just the fact that we had um, coherency and confidence of where the ball was going in that two-man action and that it was going to be the right read. And he was very patient. I thought he made the right reads. He got the ball back to Bam a couple times. Uh, I thought uh, his floater was great. And then he had another one with a left-hand one. I don't know how that one didn't go go in. Um, you know, and that's what, what it's all about. You know, uh, if we have to win, you know, ugly, so be it. Like, we held them to 13 points uh, in the fourth quarter. And... Uh, and made some some plays uh, down the stretch uh, to seal it, which was uh, which was encouraging to see. <clears throat> Coach, congratulations on a great win. Uh, to to win shooting thirty six percent speaks volumes about your defense. But I just wanted to get your thoughts on on the game Haywood Highsmith had not only fifteen and ten, but the defense he played against Tatum in the second half. Really inspiring, and, and we we're mostly in our our zone defense. But he was burning the most calories. You know, he was all over the place. Uh, Picking up three quarter court, then settling back into the zone. He was just able to apply that pressure that kind of set the tone for our defense. Uh, so it wasn't just a, a retreat uh, defense. Uh, and I thought he was really uh, disciplined. It's really hard to to play, um, you know, that hard and expend that much energy. Um, try to take away Tatum's airspace. Uh, and then when he puts the ball on the floor to get a chest on his shoulder without fouling because he's so clever uh, once he drives on how to draw contact and, and get to the free throw line. And um, H just kind of inspired that, that defense uh, in the second half um, just with his multiple efforts. Everybody else kind of joined the party from there. You mentioned that pressure. It seemed like you were trying to bring a lot of pressure on Tatum from the start. It wasn't working at first, so why why did it work better 
the second half. I don't know. You know, I think we we didn't really make the necessary efforts uh, in the first half. Uh, your scheme is not going to get anything done. It's it's the efforts, the discipline, uh, the multiple um, efforts that you have to make against a, a very good offensive team uh, with three point shooting and everything. Our closeouts were better uh, in the second half. Um, you know, putting bodies in front of them, and then if he kicked it out. We were able to get to guys quicker than we were, you know, to start the, the game. Basically, every time he wanted to just get off it quickly in the first half, it led to a wide open shot. Um, you know, when we're at our best, we're not giving up one pass, one trigger, wide open shots. And um, it was much stingier in, in that second half. And that, that's the inspiration of, you know, H and Gabe was really moving um, uh, in that zone. Uh, and Bam was just terrific on the back side of it. Two things I wanted to ask. Jimmy, how much of a surprise was it? You know, his late scratch, and then Caleb with the 11 minutes. Was there an injury there, or was it just the flow of the game? No, it was the flow of the game. Uh, he got in the foul trouble in both halves, and H played so well, it just couldn't take him out of the game. You know, that's those are the kind of things that you want from a head coaching standpoint. You know, make us play you because you're playing so hard and you're making so many things happen. Uh, and it's not just the four threes. That, that has nothing to do with it. He, he could have not scored a, a single point in this game, and he would have had his fingerprints all over this win. Uh, and that's what, that's what we are when we're at our best. Um, and then as we continue to get uh, you know, more continuity, we'll, we'll get in better offensive rhythm. I have no doubt about that, but we can win games in the meantime. Uh, by really, uh, you know, buckling down to doing the tough things. So both Vic kind of had a rough shooting. I think he only had one assist, but it seemed like his paint touches were kind of generating a lot of the looks yeah. leading up to that run. I guess just how important is that element when you don't have Jimmy specifically? All of it really mattered. <laughs> like, everybody's minutes mattered in this game, particularly when it ends up being a, a possession game, you know, down the stretch. Uh, and they're a very good team. I, uh, You know, even with the guys that they have, head out they're just uh they have a lot of spacing they know what they're doing they know where they want to get the ball to they they know how they want to execute um so there's a lot of things you have to manage uh but fix uh you know his attacks and his plays in between uh and then when you know they um in the second unit when they put cornet on him and he had the two big threes uh that was uh those were like uh relief points uh, against a, a, a specific scheme. Um, yeah, so his uh, his minutes were not big tonight, but they were very impactful. To follow up on Anthony's question about Jimmy, when did you find out? How did that play out? And can you talk a little bit again about Max being the universal donor and stepping in? Yeah. Uh, well, we found out uh, JB, um, you know, at, at shoot-around. Uh, you know, his back really tightened up on him. Uh, and then Max, uh, yeah, you can look at uh, either positively or negatively. And that's why I tell him, like, isn't this what you've always wanted? Come in there and play a, a big role, whether you're coming uh, off the bench or starting. Like, what else do you want? You know, um, I, I think that's great to be able to to be able to plug and play uh, in a lot of different roles. Um and he was able to do that tonight. It was really important. Uh, you know, he knocked down some big ones. Uh, but he also did a, a bunch of good things in the zone uh, as well because there were a lot of things that we had to negotiate and, and cover a lot of ground. Obviously, this Boston offense gets out to that number one historic start this year. How much do you look at what other teams have been able to do recently, especially since you faced them earlier in the year? to find different ways to slow them? And what kind of is the key to slowing this offense? I mean, they're, they're especially when they're healthy, they're a really uh, explosive offensive unit. They have uh, guys that can collapse your defense, and they have three-point spacing all over the place. And then they have vertical spacing uh, as well. Um, you know, we have to just do what we do and do it consistently. Uh, we feel like we can defend uh, against any roster uh, in this league when we're at our best and, and most focused and most committed. Um, look, there's no easy way in this league defensively. I don't think there was before, but 
right now with the space and skill and and cleverness uh, um, you know that that players have now you have to commit to doing a lot of tough things and there's no way of doing it without big time multiple efforts you got to show some real grit to be able to defend in this league all right thank you recording stopped